This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. I'm Alex, and this is the Ramble. We go until midnight tonight in New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. How's it going, friend? I'm going. I'm going. How is, how's everything in your life? Oh, I just... Uh glad that the Super Bowl is over. It's become... <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I don't know. It used to be kind of a fun event, and now it's just... Uh, it's, I, has there been a good advertisement in years? I don't hear... You used to talk about ads at the Super Bowl. I don't hear anything anymore. Yeah, well, occasionally there's one or two that are kind of good, you know. I, I looked at a bunch of them um, yesterday after... Because I don't watch the game, obviously. Right. And they just seemed, a lot of them seemed rather just normal, you know. Uh, but there were a few that were pretty good, but they felt that the only way that you could get real juice out of something is if you put some kind of star in the commercial, you know. Maybe uh -oh. even as just a cameo. So, you know, like they used Elton John as a cameo, and they used... Uh, um, um, what's her name? Uh, Jennifer Lopez as a cameo. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I, I just, I never, you know, I never followed the Super Bowl. I never cared about it. I'm a guy who cares so little about it that if I do go to a Super Bowl party and they do have people join a pool or something to win a prize at the end of the Super Bowl, I always won. <laughs> and everybody felt you won how can you win you that's know? what always happens yeah yeah um and i remember there was a super bowl being played at stanford one year that was 1985 I, 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 I assume you're right i never challenge you you could be bullshitting us on all these dates and things you come up with. But no, that was the, uh, in fact, it was the 49ers. They beat Miami. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Anyway, so, <laughs> it's like I care. But I, the Today Show came uh, came up to interview me uh, as the only guy in San Francisco who didn't care about the Super Bowl. <laughs> and I said, they said, why don't you like, uh, why, what do you have against the Super Bowl? I said, I have nothing against the Super Bowl. I just don't understand football. And the game never appealed to me. And they said, so what do you do on, uh, on, on Super Bowl Sunday? I said, I have sex with all the wives whose husbands yeah. are watching it. <laughs> and I don't know if they ever ran it. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, Probably not. Yeah. Yeah, that was the, uh, the Super Bowl was supposed to be played at Candlestick Park, but it was in such a mess, they actually moved it down to Stanford at the last minute. The Stanford's a rather small venue, isn't it, for football? It was a big stadium, but it was also a dump. So, yeah, it was not It was not a good Super Bowl for yeah. many reasons. But now they hold it in places like Arizona and crap like that, you know. Yeah, and the uh, the only football game I've been to in my life was a Super Bowl. My friend won a trip for two to the Super Bowl in 1980. So I went to that. I wonder was, how much a ticket to that Super Bowl cost. I had the ticket. They were like, I think, $28. Yeah, you know what they are now? I heard like 8000 Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know. And a commercial spot is for half a minute is $7 million. Uh, I think maybe for a minute. Seven million. I'm not. No, I thought it said thirty. Maybe a thirty. It could be right. You could be right. The, there are a bunch of people who bought ads for Jesus on this Super Bowl. No, I heard about it. <laughs> and they bought two of them. Cost them fourteen million dollars. You know what, what? Could these wonderful Christians have done with fourteen million dollars to help like poor people? You know the kind of people that 
Jesus would have wanted you to spend the money on? <laughs> just amazes me. Just amazes me. Uh, but uh, anyway, so, you know, whatever. So Well, it is amazing how that is just probably the biggest hype thing in the history of the, uh, the media, that uh, just this one football game becomes this insane... It, it doesn't make much sense to me, um, but, you know, uh, I, 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 I just never cared about it. In fact, I didn't watch it this year at all. Marjorie watched, I think, the first uh, half, and then Rihanna came on and she said, I can't stand this, so she then went and watched a movie or something for the rest of the game. Yeah. I don't know that I wanted to see Rihanna. I don't know if I want to see a pregnant woman jump up and down. Yeah, who needs that? Yeah, I don't know. She's 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 kind of late in her pregnancy, in her what do they call it? Uh, trimester. <laughs> she probably didn't like her third trimester. Or there is no such thing as a third trimester. There's only a trimester. They say if somebody's in their third trimester. I'm going, no, wait a minute. They're in their trimester because it's, <laughs> it's already a trimester is third. Okay, don't you understand that? Learn the English language. So anyway, so that was that, you know. Uh, but I just, I just, you know, I just never, it never appealed to me ever. And football appealed to me less. I mean... If I do like a sport, and it's not one I follow, okay, I just like it. It's baseball. I love the history of baseball. I love the lore and legends of baseball, you know, the stories surrounding it, you know, things like that. Baseball has a really romantic and wonderful place in history. And it's a great social occasion. You go out to the park, you eat hot dogs, you drink beer, you're there with friends, you talk a lot to each other, you converse. Occasionally, just very occasionally, something exciting happens out on the field, and then you're back to talking to each other again and eating hot dogs and drinking beer, right? Yeah, and it's uh, much... the. the... I don't know how the game is going to survive. It's so slow paced. I don't know if it appeals to young people or not. Well, at all. a few years ago, they, uh, when, when it was on radio, uh, they made it exciting just by embellishing it. Okay. Something well, someone says that uh, baseball is one of the few games that it actually sounds better on radio than watching it on TV. Well, let me tell you about the guy I worked for. His name was Gordon McClendon. And he owned radio stations, and he had started out in the business by starting a thing he called the Liberty Radio Network. And he was known as the Old Scotchman. And he would sit in a studio in Dallas, Texas, and do the play-by-play -play for a game that was happening like in Cleveland. All right? And he had a sound effects guy there. And the sound effects guy would have the crowd noises and the sound of the bat cracking and so on. And then he would, all he had to get were line scores from the, uh, from, from, from the place, the other place. So he had a phone line there and the guy would feed him line scores and he would just embellish the game. He'd make up the excitement of the He'd game. He'd recreate it. And supposedly people, given the choice of the two coverages of the games, would rather listen to his because it was more exciting. So much so that eventually baseball did a thing where they, at the end of their broadcast, they say, any, uh, any rebroadcast or, you know the next word, don't you? Or Re I'd Recreation. Recreate right that was it. They always of put this, that on of this game is, after every game. It's purely prohibited by the uh, you know the guy who heads up baseball, the commissioner of baseball. Uh, that was because of what Gordon McClendon had done. They wanted to you know just take the chair out from under him, but he was very successful with that, and his games were more popular than the actual games. So you know, but it was a radio game. And the trouble with baseball and what it suffered was is that when television came in, all of a sudden, 
football, which had been relegated to basically just a dumb sport. They played in colleges, and I think there were some professional teams out there, but nobody really paid attention to them. I mean, if you wanted to pay attention to them, it was because you went to UCLA, and UCLA was having a game. And so you rooted for your home team. But football all of a sudden became this phenomenon because it looked great on television. Mm -hmm. It was made for television. All the bumping and the hitting and the jumping and the thing. Meanwhile, baseball, a bunch of guys wearing kind of (laughs) flannel suits, running bases, you know, was not exciting visually. (laughs) Uh, however, I, I asked. I had a friend of mine who was a uh, she. She went out and did. Uh, she would set up TV crews and so on to do games, and she would do football games. She would do baseball games, and then she would order up the cameras and you know where everything would be in the, for shooting it and so on. And she said to me, "You know what? What game takes the most cameras?" And I said, football? Because I figured football, you know, exciting sport, a lot of stuff's happening. She said, no, baseball, because you don't know where that ball's going to go. So you've got to have more cameras out there for coverage than you do to football, where really logically you only need like two cameras following the action, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Although today they do things like, you know, they have cameras overhead and they have the sky cam and they do all of that crap. But in those days, it was just it, you needed more cameras to do baseball than football. So, L- little yeah. education, folks. I think they tried the first baseball game. They tried to, I think it was televised in Brooklyn, in like in the late '30s, in one of the, of the dawn of TV. I think they tried that one. It had to be in the '40s because uh, the television didn't come in. Till right after the war, and the reason it came in after the war is they were ready to launch it in, uh, I think my, when I was born, 1939, 1940, there was a World's Fair where they uh, had television going out live, uh, but there were no sets out there to watch it, and they decided that the next year they would start launching television, but then the war came along and everything had to be pushed towards the war effort. And you couldn't use any resources, which would eat up resources you needed for the war effort. So it wasn't until right after the war that television came out. So 1948, 47, 48 is when television first happened. You know, so. Did you know that? <laughs> I did not, no. Yes. I think Ronald Reagan, one of his first uh, jobs was uh, recreating baseball games on the radio. Right, he was at, uh, what was the station, W... It was in Iowa, uh, I think. Uh, uh, what? It was in Iowa. Iowa, I'm trying to remember the name of the... Uh, uh, oh, boy, I'm trying to remember the name of the station. Uh, I, I'm, my mind's going. My mind is absolutely going. I used the st- to, story was, one of the games was the the, uh, the line broke down there. You're, they're getting information, so he just had to... <laughs> He kept make. I think he said there was 19 foul balls in a row or something. <laughs> <laughs> Another foul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was a broadcaster. You know. yeah. yeah. So that'd be a good trivia question. Name the only broadcaster that ever became a, a president of the United States. That well, would be, huh? Yeah. Ronald Reagan. I mean, most people don't think of him as a broadcaster because he was an actor, you know. But whatever. And how good an actor was he? Yeah. But, uh, you know, I uh, I just never, I've, I've told this eight billion times I say it, you know, I, to this day, do not know how football is played. I don't understand the game. I watch it, and it makes no sense to me. And it's been that way all my life. And maybe it's that I just don't care to learn. Well, that's the way I am. If something doesn't interest me, I really don't understand it. I, I, I think my mind shuts off to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, like computers. I just I, I can't do anything with them. Well, somebody said to me, why are you so uh, good at computers? And I said, because I like computers, you know? And I, I learned a lot from working computers. So... Uh, uh, and when was I, your first encounter with computers? 
My first compi- <laughs> uh, uh, my first um, encounter with a computer was uh, I was working at doing Midnight Blue at Screw Magazine's offices, and Al Goldstein was a gadget nut, and he would buy everything under the sun. And one of the things he bought was an Apple computer, one of the old, real early Apple II computers. Like in the 70s? Yeah, and I had no idea how that thing worked. I, because you had to have some programming sense. You know, there was, there were programs you could kind of feed into it using a floppy disk. But I didn't understand all of that. But then he got an Atari. And Atari used to put out the games. But they then built a console with a keyboard. And it was a full-fledged computer. It had only 40 characters across the screen instead of 80, but it was a full-blown computer. And uh, I started playing with that because I liked the games on it. You could put a cartridge in there and play a game, or you could run it as a computer. So I kind of, that was my first real encounter. Those two things were my first encounter with a computer. It wasn't until I got to California and that my business manager uh, decided uh, I had I owned a uh, Atari computer, and one day somebody gave me a bootleg game, a bootleg of a program called VisiCalc, and this was a spreadsheet program. So I brought Gary over and I had him look at it, and he said, "My God, this is a spreadsheet, and look what I can do if I do this and I do that and do that. It adds up all the numbers." You know, and it completely, he saw the future in it because he was doing everything by hand, you know, writing in numbers and then adding them all up, you know, and doing that whole process. So we then decided, well, we'll go out and buy bigger computers. And we both went out and bought IBM computers at 3,000 bucks a piece. And uh, he, uh, he, he never, he never looked back. You know, that program, VisiCalc, changed his life. Uh, and it uh, changed a lot of people's lives, you know, what computers could do. And so I got very involved with computers, and ultimately I got into doing video with computers. I had friends who invented a thing called the Video Toaster, which was a video switcher. I got into all of it, and that's how, that was, but that's how I got into computers. Uh, okay. You know. But it was also born out of my other love, which was kind of like I had a little, I had a Bolex eight millimeter camera, really expensive camera, and I would try to shoot little movies and edit them, you know. So when a video came in and computers could edit them, it, the whole it's a whole different game, you know. So that's my story. So when did you first get to love computers? Well, I first, the first time, I think the first year I did stand-up, 81, I do remember, maybe it was IBM, they came out with a, there's a lot of fanfare, they came out with a personal computer, mm-hmm. and I, I recall it didn't really do that well. It was, seemed to, like it was good for small businesses for inventory and things like that, and then yep. someone told me that personal computers really didn't catch on until the Internet got going. Well, really it, it, people everything. didn't buy them in, in great numbers, but, uh, you know, they were popular before the Internet became big. I mean, the Internet, oddly enough, was first created, I think, in 1972. And it was meant for hospitals, uh, educational institutions, and so on, to share information with each other. And uh, as years went on, people kind of, co-opted it because hey it was out there they could use it uh and um like everything else it was started by the government but it was co-opted by the people you know another thing that was completely governmental and it still really is is uh what do you call it uh, uh, when uh, the big stuff up in the sky that you send stuff to and tells you where you are positioning devices well, it was up there. It was, you know, it had been working for a long time. It's just that all of a sudden somebody who was in the private sector said, hey, well, we can use it too. It's up there. Yeah. 
you know, and GPS. And so they everybody started log going on to these governmental GPS satellites. And um, I, I remember there was a time when, uh, oh God, you know what they're doing here? They just brought the, the, the platform up to work on the bricks in my apartment. So if uh -oh. you start hearing noise, you know, um, uh, that's what it is, folks. Anyway, um, but they started, they, people, they, people co-opted the GPS system. And so the government, to screw around with you, I remember they did this for a while because I had an early GPS in my car. They would throw the GPS off by about 300 yards. So if you wanted to pull up to a particular address, you weren't really at that address. You were like <laughs> down the street somewhere. But they gave up on that and just decided to let the public use it as well. But all those satellites up there, all the GPS satellites, as far as I know to this day, are government satellites. You know, so. Uh, but it was, it, 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 the GPS changed everything. Yeah, so what, what year do you think that was when you had the GPS? God, when did they get the first GPS? Well, let's see here. I was at Sirius, and I had, I had come back. Yeah, I came back from, uh, from, uh, uh, from Florida, that would be 1990, maybe, 1991. Yeah, and then uh, I bought my first car with a GPS in it, or, or leased it actually, because um, I kept my other car. So I leased it, and that was the first time I actually had a GPS in a car. But I had GPS prior to that because there was a program you could have where you had this thing and you hooked it up to your computer, and you, I had a, a portable computer. And then uh, you could then have it go get the GPS signals, and then you could then see where things were and how to get from one place to another. But I had to have this portable computer in the car to do it. So that was the first GPS I actually had. Is this interesting? Yeah, you're always like <laughs> the first one to get something like that. Is this interesting by any chance? It is to me. I don't know if it's anyone else cares about it, but I feel like... I yeah. like to hear about yeah. it. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I really, um, you know, I really uh, went crazy with computers and everything. I loved them. just loved them. I loved yeah. what they could do. I loved the way I could edit video where I didn't have to. The, 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 ability, the ability to edit video was really a task. You had to use two machines. You had to sync them up with each other. You then had to push an edit button to make an edit. I mean, it was a very long, laborious process. And the minute computers came in, editing video was simple. I mean, I can go out and take uh, a whole bunch of footage and come back here and edit it within a half hour because I'm just taking, you know, cuts and moving them back and forth to each other and making a final product. It's changed everything. Changed everything. GPS changed everything. I remember I used to like to say to people, well, I'm going to come up to your uh, over to your house, and they say, you want directions? I said, no, you don't have to give me directions. And they wouldn't understand what I was telling them because all I had to do was put it in the GPS, and it would just tell me where to go. That's it. That changed everything. Yes. You know, there were these Even things. I have a GPS. Yeah. And, and, well, you see, you use a computer, right? See? Uh-huh. Perfect example. Did you get it with a GPS? No, I just, uh, someone gave me a GPS for the car, and it, uh, yeah. well, I will say a couple of times that <laughs> you punch in an address that they can't find it for some reason. I, I had, uh, once I, I was using my GPS, and I was in downtown San Francisco, and I said, I want to go, I just want to have to take me out to my home in, uh, in uh, uh, the marina. So I programmed my address in for the marina, and now it takes me through every bad neighborhood you could possibly go through. And I'm thinking, did somebody I program this who had his, friend, <laughs> his friends waiting in those neighborhoods to jump cars that were using their GPS? <laughs> you know, I, I was just thinking, it's just the, oh, don't do that. That's terrible. That's horrible. It's a horrible neighborhood. Why does it make me go here when I could have just gone up, you know, Van Ness and not had to do, put up with the 
you know, the, the poor neighborhoods. So, anyway. But uh, GPS changed everything. People are spoiled. People are getting too used to computers, and I could talk yeah, to they, you. They don't know how to use maps anymore. Yeah, but I could talk to you about that next time, but why don't we make that next time and bring this to a close? We shall. Ladies and gentlemen, if there ever was a great American comic, <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> Who will never be recognized in the books of great American comics. No, really, I'm serious. It's Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks, Bubs. I appreciate it, Bubs. That's nice, Bubs. See you next week, Bubs. Love Bubs. Everybody loves Bubs. You can't help but love Bubs. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Am I ready to go? No, oh, yeah. A little lightheaded tonight, so I better drink the coffee. Mmm. Mmm. So how are all of you today? How's it going? Uh, I'm uh, on myself. Uh, well, I, I got something I want to talk about, but I'll wait till I get people in here. We don't have that many people waiting, but they're quality people. However, the people who are waiting, and uh, let me see here. Uh, there they here they come, ladies and gentlemen. You uh, notice that? Uh, let me see here. Over there, that's. Uh, gee, I don't know how. I, it's hard to do this. Uh, is is Kevin? And down there is Charlie, and down there is Josh. Um, and, uh, Which one's the secret square? What? Which one's the secret square? Well, let's see here. Is there some... Oh, here comes Jeff Stein. Okay, I'll admit Jeff Stein. Let's make Jeff the secret square. We'll make Jeff the secret square. Uh, but anyway, how are you all doing tonight? Pretty good. Yeah? Wait a minute, that was kind of a... Wait a minute. Counting in binary is as easy as zero one one zero one one. <laughs> okay, uh, that's anyway, a new one. Yeah, that's a. You can tell it's a new one. It looks fresh, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. You can even still see the fold marks in it. You know. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, how are you all doing? Doing fine. Uh, Josh, everything. How's your new job doing? Oh, so far good. Yeah, I mean, you're happy with it? Are you glad you made the decision? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Because a lot of times you have doubts about whether you made the right decision or not, and then after a while you get used to it and you go, yeah, I guess I did, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, there was some, you know, difficulty, but uh, changing things as much, you know. You know well, so. I mean, was it, it, was it a learning curve on your part? <laughs> well, I'll have to learn stuff for a while. I mean, it was just very odd, you know. Uh, for a little bit there, you know, I, I don't didn't know anyone or anything. I didn't have any connections that got me into there or anything. So, uh, you know, a little difficult. And I don't really like meeting new people and things like that. But uh, it was, I guess it was just strange, you know, where I came from. I'd been there a very long time and I was very ingrained. And I mean, there was almost nothing you could ask that I couldn't answer. Well, it was difficult to go somewhere where you know, I didn't know the answer to anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. But also, I mean, you know, when you work someplace, how long do you work at the other place? Had it been well, I was there over 10 years, and yeah. I'd gone in there as a contractor for a few years before that, so really hadn't so, had any other kind of job for well, you know, business, a decade Businesses and a half, are kind of like families in a way. After a while, you kind of... You're used to working with all those people you were working with, and now you're working with a whole new bunch of people. And yeah. so it, it kind of, you know, it's not it's not easy, you know, doing that kind of change. I've had no, right. it from time to time. I mean, when I first went to Live 105 in San Francisco, I didn't, I didn't go into the station at all because uh, uh, they didn't want anybody to know yet that I had been hired and that I was going to be doing the show the following Monday. So I didn't get to go into it till about a day before the show was supposed to start. And this station, that when I went into it, was a dump. I mean, it was just, I, I, it, right now, you know what it is now? It's, um, it's Twitter. 
Uh, but then it was our radio station in the basement of what is the Twitter building, mm-hmm. uh, or the first floor of the Twitter building. And uh, I went in there, and I mean, this place was a dump. It was so bad, they had pigeons that came from the outside, and they got in through this little hole in the ceiling, and then they would drop poop on our program director's desk all day long. Perfect. Uh, Yeah, this is what a dump it was. And I immediately got on the phone to my business manager, and I said, I can't do this. I just can't do this. And the station was really small, and it was tiny, and the room I was in, and it, it, we we'd had a studio audience, but there were like eight people. That's all we could fit in there. Um, and I just said to him, I don't know if I can do this, you know. But somehow I went in that Monday, and everybody was so nice, and I was having so much fun with it that uh, it worked, you know. But I, it, when I initially went in there, I said, no way, I'm, I don't want to go in Monday. I'm sorry, I can't do this. Yeah. That's like with me. Yeah, what? That was like with me when they worked at A and P. I got held up on a Friday. This night. isn't working a radio station isn't oh. like working at A and P for <laughs> crying out loud. But you know what it was when I got held up on let me forget it though. The guy the guy the cops came in and the first thing actually was was he black or white? And he was white because I only saw his hands. And then the camera was broke, Charlie, in the back, so they couldn't even get footage. So they yelled at the guy got Hit with fines. Is, is there anybody I, following this? Yeah, I didn't want to go to work Monday, but my mother told me to quit that after that. If they found them, I didn't. I actually wanted to believe in that. Well, I was I was making four dollars an hour. I almost got killed for like nothing, really. Anybody? They anybody? were overpaying. So Alex, yeah. K-San Sorry. was kind of like that too, wasn't it? What? K-San, K-San was kind of like that too. They were in a little closet. Uh, well, that became the quake, I think. No, no, it didn't. No, no, no. 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 It, they were in a closet too, but I don't know. I never went over there. Yeah. I never went over there. So. Yeah, it was kind of small too. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, radio stations can be dumps. They don't have to be good looking because yeah, after, because nobody cares. It's just radio, you know, it's just yeah. audio. Uh, but I remember their their elevator was pretty shitty. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I remember where was it? I think it was originally. If I'm not mistaken, it was in like a just a storefront. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, radio stations. I, some of them are dumb. Some of them are fairly nice. You know, I mean, the one I worked. At, I used to go to. Uh, I used to deliver a route out there and then go to Warner Brothers Records every day. Oh, okay. Out of Girardelli. Yeah. Girardelli nice. Square. They had nice. They had a nice little place out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when I worked in Houston, Texas, the place we worked was its own building. You know, yeah. and it had a pond in the middle of it, well, nice. a little uh-huh. pond, and they had koi fish in there. You know, so I mean, sometimes you work a nice place, and other times it's a it's an actual bona fide dump. Yeah, you know, you know how much Warner Brothers, 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 Brothers was nice. They had a lot of nice people that worked there too. I picked up documents from them every day. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. What were you going to say, Brian? What was your? You know how much koi fish are now? Well, they're expensive. Oh, you can eat those? I didn't even know. Five dollars a pound? Mm-mm. <laughs> no, they're like ten thousand dollars for like ones that are foot long. Are you the market. Really? My friend my friend has a big oh. investment for koi and uh my god, he shows me these fish and they're I bet he doesn't so I bet he doesn't own doesn't own any cats. <laughs> no. <laughs> those are basically carp. <clears throat> yeah. Fancy carp. Are they fancy really carp? Crazy, crazy market. Crazy uh, who, crazy. Who's the guy? Who, I'm trying to think of the asshole who's a billionaire uh, uh, down in the uh, East Bay, down in the South Bay. Um, Ellison? Ellison. <clears throat> Harlan oh, Ellison. Ellison. Larry Ellison, not Harlan Ellison. Yeah. Uh, uh, Larry Ellison. And he um, he had a big koi fish pond. He was big into koi fish. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, but that was it. But How do you make room for It's funny, those, I said uh, that asshole in the South Bay, and you all knew who he was immediately. He didn't even yeah, have to. It was either him or Elon Musk, one well, or the other. Well, no, Musk is, Musk is a uh, wonderfully wonderful social creature compared to, to you know, uh, uh, Ellison. Ellison. Ellison, yeah. El- there's a law for, for uh, San Jose Airport. Yeah, no takeoff af- or landings after 10 p.m. where you get fined. He doesn't care. He just pays the fine, comes in whenever he wants. Yeah. Midnight. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Private he, jet. He, he owned uh, my friend's McLaren before my friend got it. Oh, really? Oh, okay. $20 million car. 
It must be nice. A million dollar car? I thought you had a million. Twenty, 20 million dollars. Twenty, 20 million, million for a yeah. McLaren F one. <laughs> I started the car. The is one of the owners of the the Warriors owns it now, but stayed in the Woodside. But isn't yeah. that isn't that what? Don't you own a McLaren? No. Yeah, not twenty million dollars. Oh. We stayed yeah. over Brian. I wouldn't be on this show if I had a twenty million dollar car. See, that had a yeah. different friend. Yeah, <laughs> Brian, you need a chef in the house. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet you any amount of money you got yeah. that uh, Tony What's that? drank some coffee tonight. I did, Alex. I made a whole pot of Mr. Clark. Hey, you want to see the pictures you sent I me? Did, I sent a picture of it. Yeah, in the Brian. I'm drinking your coffee, uh, Alan, the flavored one. I haven't sent it in months, Alex. I'm still, and I save it for special occasions. Though, All right. You well, send him any more coffee, I'm not letting you on this program. I haven't I sent him any coffee. 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 That's my advice, Alex. <laughs> That's from Tony <laughs> earlier. Really? Yeah, make coffee. <laughs> what is it? You know, Tony, you could get one of those K-cup machines and, like, make a cup at a time. My brother bought that, and I, he said, why don't you use it? I said, I hate it. I don't like it. Alex, it doesn't stay warm. I like to see the coffee perking down like that. Sure it does. You make the cup, you drink it, and you go make yeah. another one. It stays warm. I yeah. don't know. I kind of like the idea of the, the coffee dripping down, like, in the morning. And the I coffee the drips down. Yeah. yeah, but I like to see it, like, in the Mr. Coffee. I see mother. the coffee <laughs> dripping really? down from the K-cup, yes. Yep. yes. Into my cup. Yes. Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't? What? You're, how old are you, Tony? Fifty-three, God. Fifty-three. 53. I'm eighty-three. If I can get used to a K cup, you know what I still have too, Alex? I still have an over-the-stove coffee pot that I bought on Amazon that perks. <laughs> well, percolators were interesting. I like those. Yeah, I still have it. I, I'll break it out every now and then. Yeah, I know. I bet you do. I can break it out. Like a spam and eggs, man. That goes good together. <laughs> 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 I'll be up till three tonight. I know that. So anyway, I was watching a documentary with Marjorie tonight, and it was on um, um, that uh, program. What's it? Oh God! Now my mind. See, that's what's happening in my mind these days. I was watching oh, a good one too before. I, don't say kid. anything. I'm trying to think of oh, what it was. I'm trying to. I can't try to read your mind. <laughs> that's the coffee. He's um, gonna mute. He's gonna mute you, Tony. You you're you're getting to be like Phil, Tony. Cutting I know, he's rubbing off on me, It's a bad sign. <laughs> yeah, just mute me, because I'm going to be all hopped up. I can see it. Well, it, it, it was all about this program they've got that was made in, in, uh, in Israel uh, that can <laughs> they can literally infect your phone and then find out everything about you and where you go and what you do and where you are and all Sounds of that. Like front line. What was it, what was it called? It sounded like a show I saw on Frontline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, okay. what, what was the name of the program? I just watched it an hour ago, and I can't remember the name of the program now. But anyway, uh, this program, uh, every country that uses it denies using it. Okay, that's. Isn't it, wasn't it done for Israel or something? Yeah, you know, it, well, it was made. In, it's an Israel, Israeli product. Okay, yeah. Uh, and it's called, uh, um, uh, oh God, what's the name of it? Okay, I'm, uh, somebody, somebody will eventually put it up on the, uh, no, nobody's chat. in the chat room, so nobody's going to put it up on the chat. Charlie. <laughs> but anyway. Well, what, what do they do with the information? They, for advertising? Well, a good example was this is the way the Saudis killed Khashoggi. Yeah, they knew exactly where he was, when he was going to yep. be somewhere. You know, yeah, they got into his phone. What happens is this thing drops a, a program into your phone, and then from then on, they say you're dead meat. You know, mm. I mean, it it just knows everything you're going to do. Mm. And they went to Khashoggi's uh, uh, wife uh, and said, "Could you let us use your phone?" We want to check it. We want to uh, go into it and see if this program was placed in your phone, too. And sure enough, it was. <laughs> they found it in there. So this thing's not only being used for, oh, I don't know, espionage and everything. It's been used to kill people. What do you, you got the name, right? Pegasus. Pegasus. Yeah. Yeah. 
Pegasus. That's I don't remember anything anymore. If it had happened 20 years ago, I'd remember Pegasus, okay? But anyway, uh, and, and as I watched this, I just said, this is maybe the worst thing that's ever been invented. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you know, it, it may be the worst thing ever invented. Uh, and and what? I think it's ingenious, really. I remember when you got it on Sirius. I love the phone. You're not going to listen. You're not interested in why I think it's terrible. I uh, am. Huh? Yeah. Well, well basically, interested. basically, because I mean, I after seeing this documentary, I was going to turn my phone off. You know, I was even thinking about maybe dumping it in a toilet somewhere or throwing it out the window because this thing you carry with you everywhere. And so if they want to go into this phone and then find out where you are and what you're doing and who you're talking to and when you're talking to them and when you're going to be somewhere, just that my... my uh, and your phone doesn't even have to be turned on. It, right. Yes, it doesn't have to be turned on. Marjorie said to me, well, you just, uh, I guess, erase everything on the phone, right? And wrong, no, it's probably no. still there, that program. Yeah. So, uh, and Pegasus, they won't say what, com what countries are using it. Everybody they interviewed denied it. You yeah. saw the thing, right, Charlie? Yeah. Every yeah. country was denying it. We don't use it. You know, we, we deny ever using it. And the company uh, refuses to release the name. And the company won't say either. The company started going bankrupt, though. People, I think, started to stop using them because they were, the world got wise to Pegasus. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure there's something else out there, you know. And, uh, oh, and then you had Netanyahu saying, oh, well, we don't approve of this sort of thing. <laughs> Bullshit. <Yeah. laughs> Get, you know, are you going to tell me Israel doesn't use Pegasus? Hell, if, if you, what do you, what, what, Jeff? You see what I got? You got Apple Watch. You got the Apple Watch? You're gonna like, you're gonna love it. I know. Yeah, I yeah. That's easier to track you and kill you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll just go back to a regular watch and get rid of the phone and just become a total luddite. You know. <laughs> if Bubbles has it right. Yep. Yeah, no. Get a flip phone. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know. I mean, can they, they might be able to go into those flip phones. I doubt it, however. I doubt it. I doubt it. They don't track you and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't think yeah. you can track them, yeah. But, I mean, here, I mean, like, I always know where Marjorie is. That's because you have fine friends on. Yeah, find my friend. Right. And I turn it on on her phone. She's oh. like, I have a kid, and she's my daughter, and I'm tracking her to make sure she's where she is so that when she comes home I can say oh why weren't you at your girlfriend's place like you said you were going to be or the doctor but no I mean it's just that you know we invent all these wonderful things and I mean these are wonderful things and then we use them for every bad purpose we can possibly think of but isn't that every movie we grew up with they always had something that was like this big thing and then well, it, if it gets in the hands of evil What's it gonna do? Well, my you know? first really scary computer movie was Forbin the Pro, uh, the uh, Colossus. Uh, yes, I remember thing, that. whatever. For Forbin the Colossus Project, I think it was called, mm -hmm. and it's about this. Uh, they decided to keep people from having wars. They would install these uh, computers, which would prevent people from doing it, and eventually Colossus took over the world because you couldn't turn it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I thought that that was a cautionary tale at the time, but uh, it, 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 you know, I think we've gotten to a point where we're not using this stuff for good stuff. We're doing it for bad stuff. And, you know, yeah, I love having my iPhone, but I'm playing into them inventing the bad stuff. You know, so I don't know. Call me, uh, call me an asshole. Call, you know me, call, me, a, call me a cab. What? You know what I've been doing? Me and my brother went food shopping before, right? And uh, and I, I'm going to tell you what this means. I left my phone home now. I've been leaving my phone home. He says, you're not taking your iPhone? I says, no. I says, I don't have to take it with me all the time. So I've been leaving it home one now when we're going food shopping. Like, I don't bring it out with me all the time anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there's a reason. I, 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 I can leave my phone at home now. I, I have no problem leaving it at home. Because my watch will make calls. Oh, you got the watch, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the watch. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, know, it's like you said, Alex, 30, 40 years ago, we may do, I don't need to be connected to the grid 24-7, I feel. I mean, we did just fine in the 80s. Well, you know, having... also, also you say, oh, this is social, social interaction. You know, we have social mm. networks and social uh, programs and so on and so forth. This is really very unsociable. Because people, if you ever notice, like they're on the subway or they're at a, a, a dinner, they're, 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 they're doing this, you know? Yeah. I mean, they're not even talking to each other anymore. They're just looking at their phone all the time. It's yeah, like, if you're on the subway, then you're, at least you're not watching the guy jerk off in the corner. And mind oh. you, folks, if you're tuning in now and say, well, this is just some 83-year-old fart who's a Luddite, uh, it's not true. I mean... If it weren't for people like me, you wouldn't be getting things like this because I was one of the first people to really promote them and say, "Hey, this is this is uh, this is the future," uh, and it fascinated me all the technology and everything. But you know, it's gotten to the point where where we're losing control of it. And and when I saw this thing on Pegasus, I just went and I knew this thing had I had known this thing existed. I just didn't know to what extent. They had found out its bad usages, and I uh, I watched this thing, and I just you know I went I'm throwing my phone out, you know I don't want I don't want this. Charlie, you seem to disagree with me though, right? No, I don't dis necessarily disagree with you. I just uh, I just have to carry my phone because I never know when my car is gonna break down or whatever, and I might need to. Call for help. Well, okay. In the, in the old days, your car broke down. What did you do? I kept the uh, coins in the car so I could run to a pay phone, which don't exist anymore. Yeah, well, that's the problem. And make a see. phone call from there. <laughs> see, we've kind of we've kind of uh, uh, painted ourselves into a corner, haven't we? You know, there aren't any. I think the last cell phone in Manhattan went out of service a couple of years ago. Payphone. I'm out of it, folks. I'm, uh, I, I have no memory left because of the medicine I take. So, anyway. Um, let me see. What else, what else is happening? Uh, you know, all these people out in Palestine, Ohio, is it? Yeah. Uh, who are, uh, this train upended itself and uh, Phil solved the pro problem last night, though. He says hey, you got to put a bladder in there, you know. And, He's a genius. And I'm going, You're I'm genius. going, you know, Phil. I think they must have thought about that already. I mean, if they didn't, you know, I mean, imagine it. They, uh, but he, but he said there were 1,600 derailments last year, or something like that. But they weren't all chemical spills no. like this. No, they were derailments. I know, but he says, you know, there's over 1,600 derailments, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, probably crazy. It's not I don't so think bad. On the way home. But, if you don't have this toxic chemicals in the train when it derails. <laughs> yeah, you probably got a bunch of passengers. <laughs> you know? I mean, well, uh, I remember the big one we had here a couple of years ago killed a lot of people. Mm. You know, so, I mean, it, uh, yeah, but of course trains get derailed, you know. That's that's what happens. You know, we, we don't hear about them derailing as horribly in Europe where they're going at 100 miles an hour. That's because they actually pay for infrastructure and they keep their tracks in, in shape. They maintain it. Uh, we I mean, don't I think, do that here. My, I think I, I listened to the show on my way to Lodi today. I think Alan made a good point about the brake system. Mm -hmm. I think, Alex, you walked away real quick but yeah the brake system how they they are supposed to have changed brake systems and there's one company that has not changed brake systems and that's a sort of an issue also yep wow wow this is because trump overturned it yeah trump yeah. overturned it so now all of a sudden they didn't have to so they didn't because that's going to cost them money to change over so wow not that that would solve everything but well just one one other issue yeah well, you know, I mean, I just, uh, I, we, we, I just don't know why we have all these problems. You know, why the, this, it, it's just, we don't take care of our infrastructure. Right. You know? That's because the corporations rule the country and their main ta 
goal is to make as much money as possible. Why is, why is it we, why is it we pay such obedience to the to the big companies, to the corporations? Why Citizens do we give United. them Huh? Citizens United. Yeah, but I mean I mean come on. And and, and the, there's some memes going around about the churches. You know, there was a Jesus commercial during the Super Bowl, 14 million dollars. No, no, there were two. Of, there were two of them for a total yeah. of fourteen yeah. million dollars. Fourteen million dollars or something like that. And you know, they make a joke saying, "Why don't you feed some homeless people instead of yeah. you know being advertising on the Super Bowl?" But and I, you know, was start taxing. Church. Yeah, with them not being taxed and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's when you know you're. you're I, I think you're, we should we should do an ad about you know like uh, overspending and so on and so forth. And Jesus wouldn't have done it, you know. <laughs> What about Olstein? Remember, he had the, he has a big arena, and then they had the the floods oh, or the hurricanes, yeah. and then he didn't even open it up to Locked people. Locked the church doors. <laughs> I remember that. I remember oh, that. God. That was down in Texas, right? Yeah. Yeah, this big mega Houston, church, yeah. and uh, they had uh, they needed a place for people to stay, and he nope. wasn't letting them in. Nope. You know. Like oh, room, that was that, that was what's his name? That was uh, Olstein. Uh, Joel Olstein. Yeah, Joel Olstein. Olstein. My oh, wife my. can't stand him. Anytime, well, he she, he comes on right after like uh, Meet the Press on Sunday, okay, on Sunday. Yeah. and so yeah, I might be watching the Meet the Press, and then it's That's still true. on, and he's ranting away, and she goes, he's, "Turn that off! I can't stand <laughs> him." <laughs> I used to listen to like the first ten minutes. The first ten minutes is usually a nice little story, and then right when he starts getting in after the eleven minute, he starts bringing Jesus into it. <laughs> Do you want to hear stupidity? I got to tell you stupidity. Uh, the company I used to work for, uh, Sirius XM, uh, which is known for its stupidity. I mean, they fired me, didn't they? Uh, mm -hmm. But they're known for their stupidity. Um, here's how stupid they are. Uh, Joel Osteen does a show for them, and they're paying him a million dollars a year to do it. Wow. Now, wait a minute. Shouldn't this guy be paying them? I mean, there isn't a TV station in the country that carries Joel Osteen that says, oh, how much can we pay you, Joel, to have your show on our station? That's a lot of money, my God. They're giving him a million dollars. I think it's a million dollars a year. That's what I read. They could have had you for a quarter million. They could have had me for a quarter. <laughs> and it's the same story. What can he say that's any different? It ends the same. It begins the same. I mean, come on. Crazy. Well, the guy, the guy's got a good scam going for him. You what know, I don't get is, does he have that much of an audience that they pay? That he must then mm -hmm. give him a million dollars. Just look, just look at the arena that he has. I think it's full. It's yeah. huge. So that, that's only there, and it goes over TV and then any other things. Uh, yeah, that's big um, enough to play the Super Bowl in it. Yeah, you know. it's not that big. That's gigantic. It I is gigantic. Yeah, no, yeah, it's like an old sporting arena, I think. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, when, they, when, I, when I've seen that thing and they show the audience, unless they've got like stock shots of an audience when it was filled oh. once, that's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if if he does fill that all the time like that, I'm going, whoa. Yeah, I think he does. Whoa, you know. I, mean, I remember they had 60 Minutes, and this was like, geez, like 10 years ago about him, about how he does his, his set up his sermon and all that stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. Big business. Yes, uh, um, uh, Alan? Time for me to go take care of mom. Everybody have a good weekend. Good night. Okay, okay. goodbye. Go yeah. say, hello, say hello to your mom for me. All right, Alex. Thank you. She okay. actually knows who you are. Huh? She actually knows who you are. She really does, really. She remembers you from the Bay Area. Yeah, she was probably she probably uh, listened to me when she was a teenager. <laughs> well, she's older than you. She's ninety, so maybe. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. So, uh, uh, Kevin, again, another one of your videos popped up on my uh, queue on uh, on right. YouTube. You're getting very popular. Well, you know, you got you got more. You actually you got more people now who watch one of those videos and watch one of my videos. I have no idea why. Uh, well, no, it's because you've got a lot of families that you know say, "Hey, my kids on you know they did a video about them. Go watch it." You know, you're doing a real service there. I know the kids watch them a lot. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, maybe I should start putting marching bands on this show. You know. <laughs> 
who who knows? Open up with a marching band. That'd be awesome. That yeah. would be good. Yeah. I have one video that has the neighbors would love that at ten thirty at night. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what were we gonna say? I, I have one video that has a hundred and eleven thousand views. Really? Wow. Yeah. It's a I my wife was in this can can dance thing like twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. with all these French women. And it has a hundred and I videoed taped it and it has a hundred and eleven thousand views. You see, that's what I need. Can can girls and, and a marching band. Yeah. Yeah. Um two thousand ten. There you go. I have one that I put up a years ago that has I'm up to about twenty thousand on it, uh, but it uh, was uh, was a thing about Ibiza, and uh, also I had another one that got a lot of views, which was uh, Burning Man. Uh, but you know, was that the last time you got that many people watching one of your videos? <laughs> yeah, a hundred and eleven thousand so far. In the last uh, thirteen, year, uh, 13 yeah, years, thirteen years, ten years, ten years, ten years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. A, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. You know. Not bad at did, all. Did you monetize it? No, my stup my channel's not monetized, and they won't on that channel because it's got stuff they can't monetize. Monet I have to move it somewhere else, but then what I mean, it's got stuff they can't monetize. I don't know why it's not monetized. They just told me I, they won't. I think do you it. have to have ten thousand. You have to have over a thousand subscribers before you can uh, start monetizing. Uh, yeah. No, I don't have that many subscribers. Oh, see, that's the reason why. Yeah, I got a lot of uh, stuff that says it's copyright, you know, copyright violations and stuff because, you know, they're rearranged by the director at the school, but. Um, the original thing, I didn't get permission from the co you know the writer of the song well, or whatever. High school kids so of that age it because of the copyright. Hi, it's amazing because I'm not, not putting these kids down, but kid, high school kids, a lot of them don't play that well. Yeah. Okay, and so they're a little. It's a little discordant. All right. Would yeah. you Would you agree with that? So I don't know how their algorithms decide that you're playing. I don't know the theme. Yeah. From exactly. Whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. How can you decipher that? That's what I. That's what I. There's something you can do, but I haven't. I tried it once and it didn't work. <laughs> well, they say that they say that they're not going to take it down. You just can't monetize. It. Right. Right. But I heard that if you take a, a song, say this is getting copyright, and then you take the song and you throw the pitch off by so much, short it, yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, it will get past the uh, algorithm, but I tried it once and it didn't. It hasn't and it that. said, "We know what you're trying to do," you know. So, uh, but uh, yeah, oh no! If you play, if you play a copywritten song, uh, if I play one right now, it would demonetize this. Lately, they've been demonetizing my shows anyway, and I have no idea why. They weren't shows that had you know four-letter words in them or anything like that. They're just insane. You know, so I don't, I don't know. You don't get your point four cents. Last night's show was demonetized. What? I, yes, and I, exactly. Was Phil on? Yeah, he was. Uh, oh, that's, that's why. Cool. There you go. No, but it had nothing to do with <laughs> politics or anything like that. No, it, it's just the fact that Phil was on. Oh, oh, I see. Is it that anti? Is it that Phil thing they've got going? Where if you have Phil yeah, on sure your show. Is. You get demonetized just because it's yeah. Phil. I yeah. see. Phil Meyer, yeah, yeah. There's okay. a Phil Meyer clause in the YouTube terms and conditions. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Have you ever read the terms and conditions? No. Have you ever read the terms and conditions of the? Oh, I love the Amazon license or the Apple TV uh, Apple license. Oh man, it takes three years to read it, and they'll just say, well, "Just accept it." So you just accept it, but you don't know that in there it says you're going to give away your first child. Oh did yeah. You, <laughs> did you see the South Park they did about that? <laughs> no. no. Yeah, they 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 just clicked accept without reading it, and uh, <laughs> Bill Gates came and grabbed all the kids and did some really nasty stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really bad. Did anybody, They're really nasty. Did anybody watch this week's South Park? Yes. About the royal 
about Babe uh, uh, Markle and all that. I watched last week. Yeah, that was great. Harry, was Harry, and and, uh, and Meghan Markle. Yeah, and uh, we want privacy. We want privacy. <laughs> yeah, but they kind of didn't play him as being British. They played him as being Canadian. Right, they had the Canadian heads. Yeah. Oh, with the uh, mouth. Yeah, because yeah. they had moved to Canada. Yeah, and it was just it was very funny. It was very it was funny. great. Um, I like it when he lifts when uh, Harry lifts up her head and looks down and like, hello, hello, there's like an echo. And, <laughs> and what do they keep referring to as that bitch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta watch it tonight. Yeah, you gotta watch it. Yeah. They uh, get away with everything on that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they predicted a lot of stuff too. Yeah. Them and the Simpsons. <clears throat> You know, I heard you talking about Larry Ellison about a year ago. I, I knew where he kind of lived, and I looked on Google Maps. Just look for the koi fish. Jap yeah, I, it was a Japanese-style place, so I found it super easy on Google Maps, and then I just followed where the road to the entrance was. Yeah. And I was out riding my bike, and I went to the gate on Home Road where he lives. Yeah. And, and, I, and I was, like, looking around, and this voice comes and goes, Hello, can I help you? I'm like, oh, I just rested here. I was riding my bike. Okay, well, uh, please move on. <laughs> oh, that was there really. I don't know if it was he, Larry Ellison. Or I not. doubt if it was Larry Ellison. No, I think it was like a some d guy that works there. Do you think there. he answers his own doorbell? No, no, I don't think so. Oh, hey, let's look at our ring. <laughs> yeah, it was out there. <laughs> you know, yeah. when I when I worked at a software company. Uh, we got a guy on their board was Joe Graziano from Apple, the CFO, and his best friend was Larry Ellison. And uh, I never met Larry, but he would talk about him all the time. And they all, they both had multi-million dollar cars. He, well, he, 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 he's always been known in Silicon Valley as the major asshole. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. 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 And he doesn't seem to care. He says, I've got all this money. Fuck you. Oh, no, he doesn't care. You know, he, he doesn't care. He's got so many houses, too. I mean, I don't even know how often he... That's his main home, but I don't think he's there that much. Well, but the koi fish are there. That's where the koi fish are. Yeah. that's a, It's all. It's really cool. I was looking through the fence. It's acres and acres. It looks like the Japanese tea garden in Golden Gate Park. Mm. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you Woodside, can see right? it on Google Maps. In Woodside, right? In Woodside? Yeah, in Woodside on Home Road, you know, between yeah. Whiskey Hill and, yeah. You know, yeah, you know what I never Road, could right? get? Did you ever like the Japanese tea garden in Golden Gate Park? When I was a little kid, I used to like When I was a little grandma. kid, our, our school would always say, we're going, to the, uh, yeah. we're going to the Japanese tea garden. Now, what kid wants to go to a Japanese tea garden? You know? It was kind of boring. Yeah, no. I'd rather just go over to the aquarium and see the big skeleton of a whale. Oh, it's nice to go the first time. I, I felt the same way. I'd go, I'd go just because my grandmother would bring me, and then I'd ask her if we could go see the skeleton. They have this place in case, for people who are not in San Francisco, they have this place in Golden Gate Park uh, called the Japanese Tea Garden, and it's a Japanese tea garden. You know, you walk through it, and you go up with these weird... <laughs> That was bridges. the big thing, was going over the bridges. Yeah, right. You have yeah, to, that was fun. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it was. I guess it was fun for a kid once or twice, but then every year it was, we're going to the Japanese tea garden. Have your parents sign this thing, and you can come Let's with us. Let's go stab the fish. Yeah, right. We spent at the Young Museum all the time. I lived in Red City. Yeah. But then they you also had the, uh, they had the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the aquarium. Yeah. Yeah. It's still I got to tell you, this was very funny. So I'm working at uh, I'm working at the Camel in San Francisco, and they decide they want to have a, a party for you know advertisers and so on. So they hold it at the San Francisco Aquarium. Steinbeck uh, Stein oh, Steinhardt to... Museum uh, Steinhardt Aquarium. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, so I'm I'm. You know, I go to it, I walk in, and I'm, you know, somebody walking around, you know, with a plate full of food and stuff like that. And they said, would you like some? And I said, well, what do you got? And they said, sushi. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, there are all these tanks around us with all the fish swimming around us, right? And this person's trying to have me eat sushi. 
And I wonder how those fish felt about that. You know, just to throw shit at the crocodiles. I little... would say you serve steak at something like that. You don't serve fish. Very disrespectful. Yes. And in fact, Hater I saw, jerky. I saw our general manager try to save some money by fishing into one of the tanks, but uh, you know. But anyway, so that was when we, yeah. we grew up. The we big used thing to go was, there and didn't. Wasn't it when the kids used to go over the crocodile thing in the middle, of the the middle of it, and, and throw, throw pennies, pennies, throw pennies yeah, on the them. pennies. There were yeah, all these pennies. all these really tired old alligators. Yeah, walking around with goddamn pennies on their backs. Yes, but they never moved. They looked they dead. Never they fucking moved. Playing. Never moved. The only time they moved was when a kid fell in there. Yeah. <laughs> I just went to the Young last week to go see the uh, Ramses Two display. Mm. What was, was that? A, what was that? A whole uh, whole display of condoms? <clears throat> what? Yeah, yeah, Egyptian. You know, Ram, uh, Ramses the Great. Oh well, was like Ramses Ramses to me were condoms when I was growing up. Yeah. 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 Ribbed for her pleasure. I I, no, I, I can never figure out why they. You know, they named a, a condom after an Egyptian uh, king. Well, if you saw him, you'd know he was well hung. Oh, no. I, I, uh, I did. I did read that thing that uh, that uh, Phil told us about last night. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was in the uh, it was in the New York Post. That's why he saw it. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's that uh, the penises have gotten larger over the last fifty years. By about an about an inch and a half. Wow. But they say it's not for good reasons. It's because of of uh, uh, binging on uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, McDonald's hamburgers and things like fast that. Fast food. Fast, fast food. food. And the other is but, one other reason. But when you eat fast food, everything grows. Your stomach. Your Legs, everything. No, but but your penis should kind of get shorter because you're you're getting fatter around it. Well, you just can't see it, so yeah. it's, it's getting smaller. <laughs> Unless you eat a lot of der Wiener schnitzel. <laughs> oh, that was good. What? Home of the Whopper, home of meeting. <laughs> yeah, home of the Whopper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had one too many Whoppers. You know. <laughs> Uh, no, the average uh, length Maybe, was, uh, what was it, F uh, the average length, 4.5 4. inches or something, and then today it's like almost 6, something like that, yeah, so, uh, I'm going, you know, 4 inches, 4 inches is average. I'm yeah. going to bring it up to my oncologist Monday. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to bring it up to who? My, I got my oncologist for a scan, you know, to see how the seeds are. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I won't ask them that. They were probably laughing when they put me on the... <laughs> you have an <laughs> oncologist? Oh, yeah. you have cancer? Yeah, he had, yeah. He had prostate got... cancer. Oh, oh no, shit. don't start this again. No, I don't want to hear about it. I'm tired of it. And I got, to, I got to see an oncologist next week. For... Oh, boy. It's blood, right, Alex? Yeah, this, yeah, this blood work came back kind of a little weird on one thing, which yeah. my doctor said is... 10% chance it's anything. Don't even it? worry about it. But we're sending you to the, the hematologist oncologist because it seems at all, and I don't know why, all, mm -hmm. most hemato hematologists are oncologists. Oh, really? Yeah, and I never could figure out why. But anyway, um, when you were, we were growing up, did they have oncologists, or is that a fairly new profession? Well, I didn't get an We're answer on that one. What? They're more sophisticated. It, what did you say? They're, they're more sophisticated. They're doctors. more sophisticated doctors, I say. But anyway. The sophisticates. <clears throat> well, do you think, uh, 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 let me ask Josh this, uh, Josh, uh, do you think maybe there's a good chance that they're finally going to charge Trump with something? Or do you think he's going to skate on this one too, the thing in Georgia? I don't know. Um, good question. Uh, I mean, I think they probably will because they probably should and they probably have to. Mm -hmm. I don't know. My natural inclination is to almost believe that it won't. They won't. You know, that it'll just. 
go away or whatever. I don't know. I mean, if they are, I think, you know, they should probably get moving on that pretty soon. I, I honestly don't understand what takes, you know, forever to uh, get these things done. I mean, I, I don't know why someone commits Well, a crime. I guess they want to feel that if they're going to nail him, they better, they better have the goods on him. You know, well, right. But I, but I mean, after a couple of years, how many more goods you're going to find? You know, I mean, they need to, you know. Oh, no, absolutely. Move on. Got them but I mean, I, to cry. You know, I don't know. I, I don't work in that field. So maybe someone who does is hearing me say that and it's, you know, offending them or whatever. I mean, I, I, I understand. So, I mean, but it's just. I don't know. I, I kind of lean toward no because it just seems like no one wants to deal with the firestorm that'll come along with it. It's, but it's they like say they, they, finds it inconvenient and moves on. They you know? say that this uh, this uh, grand jury has found that one yeah. or maybe more people were lying when they testified. They committed perjury. I'm sure they were. Perjury. So everybody's yeah. sitting around saying, "I wonder who that is." <laughs> No, I'm betting. I'm sure. I'm betting. Many people lie to him. I'm betting it's Giuliani. Yeah. When, yeah. When shall I'm, I'm yeah? quite certain that that probably happened. There's no doubt because some of these folks are so arrogant and so, you know, stupid that they think that they don't have any uh, evidence to the contrary. But, you know, I'm sure that they do. But the question is, is are they ever going to? Are they ever going to cash that in? And if they lose in the in the court, then they lose. You know, but you've got to, if you really believe that a crime was committed, then, you know, that's your duty and that's your job, then you need to do it. You know, now this prosecutor may very well do that. I mean, I'm not uh, accusing her of not yet. You know, I'm just saying, but, you know, if you get a grand jury indictment, which... Uh, it sounded like they did, right? I, maybe I didn't understand it, but well, not really an indictment, but I guess they recommended one, right? I mean, mm -hmm. is that, I don't know how they really work it down there, but. Well, a grand jury, I think, indicts, I mean, uh, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, so like if you have that, and I think we've seen enough evidence to know that they have that, obviously, because we've seen it. Mm -hmm. So they have to also have more. I mm -hmm. mean,. They obviously have more than what we've seen. But then I don't know what the holdup is, you know. I mean, and if that happens, um, then he has to go to court. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not going to be able to claim anything about anything. Well, I mean, I mean this he, this is on the this is on the Georgia thing. He's also got the federal stuff with the uh, right. you know with the January sixth and and yeah. also right. also the uh, yeah. stolen documents. I mean, but you know. The, the Georgia thing it means that he has to go to court. He has to stand trial. I mean, he won't plead guilty, but that he has to, you know, I mean, because you can't, it's not like Congress contempt and I'm not going to testify this. Opinion. No, I mean, if you're charged with a crime, you have to go to your trial. I mean, the only way that he would get out of it is, you know, that he resides in Florida and it's in, and it's in Georgia. If he, you know, if, Florida refused to extradite him and he never left the state, right? You know, I mean, that's his only option. But, you know, I don't know if Florida would do that or not. Well, I mean, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me think about this for a moment. Uh, the DeSantis is the governor. Right. <laughs> and he's thinking of running against Trump. Yeah. I don't think he's going to do anything to stop Georgia from extraditing him. Uh, probably not. That's, yeah. I would agree. So, I mean, like, that would be his only, you know... Uh, way out, I guess, you know. Uh, but I do think that if they do, honestly, I think if they charge him with a crime, mm -hmm. that it'll be fake. I think that they will reach some sort of agreement or whatever, and it'll it'll be nothing. You know, like, seriously, I think it'll be a joke. You know, like, when it's all said and done, he'll get, like, 30 days probation or some stupid I mean some stupidness I mean I I just don't believe that anything will happen to him until I see it 
I mean, and yet, if it were know, anybody else, something we'll would have see. happened. And did you see that they, uh, it looks like the Justice Department isn't going to go after Matt Gates for t- say, traffic, uh, sex, for yeah, traffic. They're not. Can I try this again? I, I, English is a second language now to me uh, for uh, trafficking, sex trafficking. Uh, right. They say they're not going to. They're not going to charge him with it. So, is the feeling so? Mm-hmm. You know. They must they must not have the evidence they think they need to win. I mean, mm-hmm. I assume. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, maybe he's innocent. I don't know. I didn't follow the case that closely or know all that about it or anything. I mean, he's obviously a sleaze bag. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But you know, that doesn't mean he, you know, committed the crime he was accused of. Yeah. Yeah. If you even want to call it accused, I don't really know that he was accused of it, but he, yeah, he's a he's a real piece of work. I mean, look, these are the people that the Republican Party is, you know, offered up as, you know, the front men for their for their party. I, I mean, I really think like in fifty years from now, I really think that people are going to be looking back. Uh, people who are alive still. We'll say it, and I know that the historians will say it, and they will say that he, Trump, changed the Republican Party and that he literally destroyed it, and it will somehow or another here eventually remake itself, and then we'll see what it stands for after that. But it will look nothing like it did before. Do you think the Republican Party... He will be held Yeah, but do you think the Republican Party is going to is going to disappear, or do you think the Republican Party is going to be replaced by something else? I don't know if it's going to disappear, and if it is replaced by something else, they'll still call themselves that, but it will not be what it is now. You know, no you different th- you than think, the you, Republican you, Party now is not what it was 100 years ago. But do you think these uh, these basket cases, as I'd like to think of them, uh, in any way feel that they've learned their lesson? I Absolute, mean, you no, know, I, I mean, like that. the other day, I'm watching Nikki Haley give a speech <laughs> on MSNBC. Her speech is right. being broadcast on MSNBC because that's always what Marjorie yeah. has on. And Nikki Haley starts out her speech, and I'm thinking, mm, she's handling herself pretty well, you know, good for her. You know, she's talking about we got to make uh, the Republican Party a lot younger with a lot younger people in the Congress as well to. You know, blah, 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 blah. And she's given this great speech about how we can prove things and how things can get better. And then all of a sudden, I'm, and I'm saying to Marjorie, you know, she's really on the right track with this, you know? And all of a sudden she says, and then there's that old codger, uh, B- uh, Joe Biden, and, she, and then she starts slamming <laughs> Joe Biden like crazy. I'm going, she just lost me. Yeah. Just lost me. Well, she's she a was, piece of trash. Yeah, but she was on no. the right track. She was on the right track until she started bashing uh, Biden. That, that, that's what they all do. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, if I were a Republican candidate, what I would do is at no time would I bash Biden. I would simply sell myself. Whatever happened to the person who simply sells themselves and doesn't denigrate the other guys running against them? You know? I mean, she had me for about five minutes, and then all of a sudden she started bashing Biden, and I went, that's it, you know. And then also she came up with this thing that every uh, politician in Washington, what, over 50, should take a competency uh, uh, test or something like that, you know. It was over 75, yeah. Did she say over 75? She said 75, yeah. Okay. That's because... and then Don Lemon over at CNN got got yelled at be, yeah. because he went on the air and was with these women, and he said, "Well, you know, I mean, uh, what's to say that uh, women aren't over the hill at 50? Oh, uh, oh, Lord! But but what he was trying to do was he was trying to go after Nikki Haley when he said right. that. But unfortunately, he came back and blew him back in the face, which I'm sure he's used to anyway. Well, uh, you know. But, you know, that, that kind of stuff is up to the voters. And, I mean, we do have the right to change things as we see fit. But, you know, something like that, it is not a requirement constitutionally for office. It was not envisioned to be a requirement by our framers. And it's just, to me, it's just another example of something that Republicans want to tear down. Mm-hmm. At the, and then at the same time, talk about how Democrats hate America. You know, Republicans are the ones that don't like America. 
they're the ones that want to strip it down to nothing and, and start it over in a way that fits only them or only the people that they mm-hmm. want to let mm-hmm. in. Yeah. Well, you know, what I is mean, they're not requirement? open to, to anything other than a return mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. something, or not a return to, a, a path that only reflects what they want. What were you saying, Charlie? No, it was I'm me. I was wondering. Oh, it was you. Yeah. What okay. was the requirement that you're talking about, Josh? You said there was well, uh, having a person take some sort of mental acuity test uh, oh, right, at the right. age of 75 in order to stay in office or run for office. I mean, well, it's, it's so not re- a requirement for, for office. I mean, if but, she wants to make it one, that's a policy. She's allowed to propose that. But I'm saying that it's that it runs against American values exactly. from our framers, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh yeah, what, 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 yeah. What, what Lemon was accused of saying was that well, a woman's over a prime after fifty anyway, right? And I think what he meant was you know she's past childbearing age, she's past a few things like that. But uh, he was he, today he didn't come into work. <laughs> today he was he was uh, he was told to stay home. Okay. Um, oh boy, you can't but, you can't you know, you know something you're hired. To go on the air and be opinionated, and when you get opinionated, you get fired. It doesn't make yeah. sense, right. you know. I mean, uh, just have if Lemon wants to go on the air the next day and say I was I said what I said was wrong. I was, you know, speaking out of both out of my ass on that one. Uh, <laughs> then he should be allowed to do it, you know. And and everybody should say, okay, he apologized. We we like anybody who apologizes. But you can't even apologize anymore. Because if you apologize, you're then considered guilty of what you were accused of doing, and you can't go to work the next day anyway. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, I'm just saying that when she talks, I don't hear anything different than all the rest of oh, no, no. the Republicans. No. And but I so, thought I was just, for a brief... I, I mean, I know, I know that that test is a simple thing or whatever, but I'm just telling you, it's one more step of a revelation of what they ultimately are and i'm telling you i become more convinced every day that that party is slowly but surely becoming the party of fascism in america oh yeah that I'm, I'm telling you that that is exactly why i think you're absolutely correct and not because i want to hate the republicans on any visceral level but i want to hate the republicans on any visceral visceral i can't because, talk yeah. anymore on any <laughs> because that is what fascists do, and they never show up yep. in a fascist suit holding up a big sign that says, "I'm a fascist and I want to control you." They do it one little thing at a time. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. that's the way to get there, and that is exactly what they—they they want to do everything like that. I mean, you know, it just—I mean, people are just mm-hmm. not educated enough to pick it up on it or whatever. I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so when people ask me why I wouldn't vote for Nikki Haley, that's why. <laughs> well, I mean, I all I said was is that she looked like she was maybe going to try a new right. approach, and 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 she didn't, you know. And I right. think uh, if they, were, they they can't do it. The they, Republican that because, is going to be able to win is either going to be another discordant Trump type, at which uh, DeSantis is capable of, or it's going to be a Republican who starts becoming reasonable. Okay, but I'm asking for too much. Mm-hmm. Anyway, right now, I think tonight I suddenly made English my second language. Uh, boy. Anyway, I thank you all for being here tonight. Kevin, thank you so much. Always nice to see you here. Next time, bring the marching band with you. Okay. <laughs> uh, 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 Charlie, good to see you here. And uh, Josh, Wonderful having you around, as usual. Uh, Jeff, good to see you from Florida. Uh, you. Tony, good to see you from Queens. Uh, and, of course, it's Brian. And then we finish off with Ray. Everybody, give yourself a big wave goodbye. Put it up on a toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. And I will uh, say goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel. Oh, boy, I don't know what's wrong. Why can't I speak the English language tonight? Did I have a stroke during the show or something? Anyway, I'll see you again. Uh, what is it? Monday, we're going to be back here with a thing we call the pop-up. And that will be on Facebook. 
And it's a great show with a bunch of great people. And we'll be back here again with another group of great people on Wednesday. Uh, Jack Bishop is next, right here with the uh, intersection. And he'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. Meanwhile, I'll see you on, Tuesday, when, on Monday. And then on, Tuesday, on Wednesday, we'll get this all straight. Monday for the pop-up show on Facebook. And then we'll see you on Wednesday at 1030 right here. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Have a nice weekend, everybody.